A very good evening to all brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. So today is the 12th September 2023, Tuesday class. So we will be continuing our sharing from this book, the wonderful Dhamma Lotus Flower Sutta. We are on page 475. As usual, let us gather and have our physical puja. Namo Pensu Su Jia Moni Fo. Namo Pensu Su Jia Moni Fo. Namo Pensu Su Jia Moni Fo. Namo Guan Su Ying Pu Sa. Namo Guan Su Ying Pu Sa. Namo Guan Su Ying Pu Sa. Namo Ami Tho Fo. Namo Ami Tho Fo. Namo Ami Tho Fo. Namo Milo Fo. Namo Milo Fo. Namo Milo Fo. Namo Pusien Pusa. Namo Pusien Pusa. Pusien Pusa. Namo Tisang Wang Pusa. Namo Tisang Wang Pusa. Namo Tisang Wang Pusa. Namo Fo Pusa. Namo Fo Pusa. Namo Fo Pusa. Arahang Sama Sambuddho Bhagawa Buddhang Bhagawantang Abhiwademi Swakato Bhagawata Dhammo Dhammang Namasami Supatipano Bhagavato Saukasango Sanghang Namami Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dhammang Saranang Gachami Sanghang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Sanghang Saranang Gachami Panati Pata Viramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Adina Dana Viramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Kami Sumi Chachara Viramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Usawada Viramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Sura Miraya Majapamadatana Viramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami from the Padipa Puja onward. Padipa Puja. Ganna Sarapa Dittena Dittena Tamadang Sina Diloka Dipang Sambuddang Pujayami Tamonudang Ganda Sambara Yutena Dupena hang sugang hina 
Pujaye pujani yang tang, puja baca namo temang, wana ganda guno petang, etang kesuma santatin, puja yami munindase, siri pada sarorohe. Puja mi betang kesumena nena punena metena cehotu mokang pupang bela yati yata idang me kayo tata yati binas abawang adibase tuno bante Pani yang parika pitang anu kampang upadaya patigan hatu mutemang hati wasetu no bante pale parika pitang anu kampang upadaya patigan hatu mutemang Adivase tuno bante bojanang parika pitang anu kampang upadaya patigan hatu mutemang. Now we shall chant the puja aspiration based on our understanding of all the significance of all these puja offerings. Significance or offering of light. May this offering of light to the Buddha brings forth the causes and conditions to illuminate our mind and help arise and need the clarity and understanding to dispel all darkness or ignorance therein. Significance or offering of water. May this offering of pure, clear, cool water lead us to the pure, clear Dhamma that cools and doses of the fires of all defilements within our mind. Significance or offering of incense. May our morality, virtue and understanding shine forth far and wide, just like the fragrance of this incense which we are offering to the Blessed One, who is perfect in wisdom and virtue. Significance or offering of fruits. May this offering of fruits remind us of the dana parami of generosity and the fruit of our karma, so that we will diligently strive on with heedfulness to attain the path and fruition soon as possible. Significance of offering of flowers. May this constant offering of flowers to the Blessed One Strengthen our faith and constantly remind us of the impermanence of this body so that we will diligently and sincerely strive on to cultivate sila, samadhi and panya, leading to ultimate liberation, the born free nibbana, making of oral aspiration. By the power of all these merits, born of these offerings, May our spiritual faculties of Sada, Virya, Siddhi, Samadhi, and Panya be further strengthened until they become balas or powers. Sharing and transform marriage to all beings. May these merits be shared and transferred to all beings without exception, especially to those who have the condition and affinity to see them. Sadhu. Sadhu, Sadhu, Padang Pujami. Damang Pujami. Sanghang Pujami. So, before we start, I just want to let you all rejoice one more time. Sister Quinia, she has taken the short term ordination eh, at the, uh, what is the temple's name? I forgot it. Uh, 
Uh. Ah, tama. Uh. Where is it? Uh? Semenyak dah. Okay. Uh. So, no wonder last Tuesday, uh, she tried to make it to attend our class. Uh. Then after that, the Sunday, uh, before she went for the... Oh, no, not Sunday, I think. Before she went for the ordination. Oh, maybe it was Sunday, I think. She again came, but she didn't tell me huh? oh. Oh, until when she was there ordained. Then only the asked the doctor to send me the photo. <laughs> That's why we should rejoice huh? at her age with her faith. So she was full of gratitude. After she developed the understanding of the teaching, she has this faith. And she wants to really uh, have this occasion. Huh? The ordination, temporary ordination. So you look at her facial joy and expression. Eh? You can feel her. Eh? So we all rejoice. Eh? Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So most of us are familiar. The awareness based meditation is to help us stabilize this inner awareness within so that it can prepare us to have this ability to meditate. Uh, when you have the spiritual faculty with you, you will be able to be in this meditative state of awareness all the time. Uh, so awareness-based meditation is to develop this ability to be aware most of the time. Yeah. So, please remember the four support, especially the first three. Yeah? And they are very simple. Uh, don't be like uh, too sophisticated and believe that this is something very difficult. No, it's actually very easy when you understand. But if you don't have the understanding, you are not able to do it because people have the tendency to believe that to meditate there must be a meditator <laughs> then who meditate? you think you meditate but your basis of meditation is to use the thought so thought is the meditator thought is the one actively creating the ego in you, eh? the personality in you, to do. So they will normally ask for a method or a technique for them to follow, and they use their thought to develop it, or to try to uh, follow those instructions eh? or method or technique thinking that by doing so, they are meditating. Maybe there is meditation to other people, eh? but to us, it's not awareness-based meditation. Those are mostly we call thought-based meditation, which are basically skillful means to achieve something. Eh? And their problem is they cannot develop the calm mind the mind that is peaceful, collected, calm, tranquil, still, they can't. Yeah. And because of that, they are forced to come up with methods and techniques to fix the mind, to anchor the thought process, so that your mind does not wander or become lost in thought, become heedless. So all these are just skillful means to anchor the mind. Then through the anchoring or repetitive training, they believe they can become peaceful, calm. But if you do it that way, without understanding, you are actually taking a big detour, uh, wasted a lot of your so-called precious meditative time. If you have the understanding, what you are trying to develop is the awareness within. 
and we have to understand what awareness is. Awareness is the awareness nature within before the thinking arises, before the thought arises. That nature inside is just aware, which means you must understand without thought, you are already aware. So if that is the case, then this meditation, which is awareness-based, must not involve thought. You must not use thought to drive it or to develop it. You can't. That's why we have to come out with the support. The support are very simple. The first three, relax body and mind. When you relax body and mind, there is no thought involved. Just an exercise of relaxation. We feel at ease, peaceful, relaxed. Body and mind at ease. When your body and mind is at ease, there is no thinking, nothing. Yeah. But because of habitual tendency, because of our uh, daily life, most people are not trained. You tend to be heedless in the midst of life. J. Krishnamurti call it the mind is in the state of disorder. There is no order. Means it's not in the appropriate conducive state of awareness to be aware. So when this happens, it is because you lack the five spiritual faculties. And because you lack the five spiritual faculty of Sada, Virya, Sati, Samadhi, and Panya, the opposite five mental hindrance arise. This mental hindrance, they are sensual desire, ill will, sloth and topper, or lethargic mind, sleepy mind. Then you have restlessness of mind. So restlessness of mind can arise due to many uh, circumstances. So your mind becomes restless when you have problem, when you have attachment, you have fear, you have worry, you have remorse. So this mind becomes restless. Uh, it like uh, not at ease, think a lot. Uh, then the last one is doubt. And they are called mental hindrance. When this mind state arises in you, they will make you what they call heedless. Means it prevents you from entering the meditative state of inner peace, inner calmness, and inner awareness. That's why it's called mental hindrance. It will hinder your mind from becoming peaceful or aware within. So because of that, we need to either develop the stability of the five spiritual faculty or use this understanding to develop the awareness means relax the first support so that you don't think then maintain awareness when you maintain awareness means allow the mind to be aware finish but because of most people's heedless condition they are not able to have that state of mind so the mental hindrance that are there actually is not easy to deal with so what you do is you maintain awareness means whatever arise just aware finish don't let it continue don't let it follow uh, whether sensual desire you will or sleepiness or what you just relax into it, maintain awareness, or be with it, even the sleepiness. Then suddenly there is a shift of consciousness, you will be gone. Yeah. Then when there is restlessness of mind, don't resist, don't fight it, don't try to stop it. No, when you do that, the one that is trying to do all this is the thought. So the thought becomes active again, you will try to do things. That's why I always advise. Don't try to know, don't try to do. Just relax, maintain awareness. Whatever arises, 
away, finish, away, finish, even down, away, finish, rest, 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 away, finish, let it be, do not fight, do not resist, do not try to do anything. Then whether it's a tactile, you upon contact of your senses with the external sense data and your mind, it will trigger off the respective consciousness. So when the consciousness arrives before you perceive, just aware, then let it be. Or sometimes aware, perceive, let it be. Don't continue. Don't let the thought continue to create more chattering, more thinking, more proliferation. Don't it? Just aware, finish. Aware, finish. Yeah. Then the third support is to stabilize this, to continue to be aware until this awareness nature within is very stable. Yeah. You can do that. Then sooner or later, your mind will settle down to return to its original state before the stirring, before the heedless thinking. So this will like help you to develop the awareness within. It will decondition the heedless thinking or habitual thinking or habitual concording inside there. Yeah. So relax, aware, then maintain awareness. Yeah. These three were able to let you settle down. So when you settle down, you will suddenly feel the difference. Your awareness nature within, like that consciousness, which is originally like a lot of mental activity or thinking or contact with sense bases and the arising of perception triggering of all the sankrasanya activity. Now you can actually reverse all this by being aware. Relax, aware. Relax, aware. Then it was settled down. It was settled down. That it will lose its momentum, or what we call that craving force to continue with the habitual thinking. Then not long, that shift of consciousness will come. You feel very quiet all of a sudden, like all the background sound or vibration or activity of mind, the thinking, the sankara or what, like suddenly either disappear or slow down. Yeah. Then later on you can actually experience like no more thinking, no more thought. It's like very quiet inside there, very still. And when that thing happened, it's a good thing. Yeah. So I will rejoice and sadhu you. Yeah. But most people don't understand. They become curious. What is that? The moment you become curious, the thought arises again. Then you will lose the ability to be in that state. So the awareness nature within that has a reason, you need to stabilize it. So continue to relax, maintain awareness, and let things be until it's settled down. Then when you have developed the stability of it, use it to meditate from there away. Then use it to inquire, to investigate, to find out what is going on in life, what is going on within the mental thinking, the fine aggregate of my activity. So all these are the investigative training that you can develop. Then later on when you have stability or understanding, then you can inquire deeper by asking without thought, who are you? What are you? Uh, then through that silent observation, you can see a lot of things happening. You can come to know clearly who are you, what are you, and how you function as a human being. 
and how everything is exactly like what the Buddha thought. They are dependent originating. Without causes and conditions, nothing arises. Uh, everything that arises, there are causes and conditions behind. So, silent your mind to observe, to develop the understanding. Then all of a sudden, that nature, the awareness nature, it can insight into phenomena, it can awaken, and it can develop the direct seeing, to see things as they are, to understand truth, to understand the reality. Yeah. So all of the nature's law that governs life and existence, you can start to witness them. Yeah. The law of dependent origination, cause and effect, and everything is just arising, passing away, dependent on those other causes. It triggers the effect. Then this effect becomes new causes, and it condition and trigger of more effects. So all this is what meditation is all about, awareness within. So you can slowly mindfully come out of the meditation eh? try to maintain whatever inner peace inner calmness and inner awareness that you have developed for as long as you can eh? these are the mind state we need eh? to live life to cultivate the daily mindfulness to develop the heedfulness in the midst of life mm. invocation to the devas in this universe, in the entirety, let the deities or devas come here. Let them hear the good teachings of the king of sages, which gives heaven and release Nibbana. This is the time to listen to the teaching. This is the time to listen to the teaching. This is the time to listen to the teaching. Samantha Chiakawalaisu Atra Gachan to Devata Saddamang Muni Rajasa Sunantu Sakamokadang Dhammasvanan kalo ayang badanta. Dhammasvanan kalo ayang badanta. Dhammasvanan kalo ayang badanta. Namo atasa bhagavato. Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Iti peso bhagawa arahang sama sambuto Vija charana sampano sugato loka vidu Anotaro purisa dhamma sarati Satta deva manusanang Buddha Bhagavati Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sanditiko Akaliko Ehipaseko Opanaiko Pajyatang Veditabu Vino hiti Supati pano bagawato sawakasango 
Ujo pati pano bagawato sao kesango. Nyaya pati pano bagawato sao kesango. Sami ci pati pano bagawato sao kesango. Ya di tang catari purisa yukani ata purisa pukala esa bagawato sao kesango ahuneyo pahuneyo dakineyo anjali karaneyo Anu terang punyang ketang loka sati sadu sadu sadu. Then we shall continue from where we stop. Eh? Turn to page four seven five of this book, the wonderful Dhamma. Lotus Flower Sutta. If people with scattered mind enter stupas or temples and say but once, Namo Buddha, or Namo Buddha means you pay respect to Lord Buddha, then they have realized the Buddha way. Then there is the outline explaining the opening and revealing in regards to recitation of the Buddha's name. So reciting the Buddha's name when you visit a way place is very important. Yeah? That's why all this has its efficacy. Hmm. Then we go to the commentaries by Xianhua. Eh? So the sutta say people with scattered mind, the meaning is Scattered means they don't have samadhi power. They are not at all collected in their mind. Uh, here, Jenhoi used the word concentrated, uh, but it should be collected. Uh. These lines describe a situation such as when the tourists come here to visit the temple. Uh, Jenhoi is talking about their one fortune, a city of 10,000 Buddha, and graze around at the Buddha images. They do not have sincere heart. What is more, they may look at the images, but they do not know anything about the Buddha. You could say they were the one with scattered heart, or the scattered ones among the scattered ones. So this is Jen Hua's description. Eh? Yeah. But the main point of the sutta is if your mind is scattered, eh? means you don't have the training, you don't have smarty power, means your mind is not collected, not in the meditative state of inner peace, inner calmness, and inner awareness. Means you lack the true mind, the ability to be aware within. And that is what heedfulness is all about. Yeah. When you are ever mindful, constantly meditative, that mind is heedful. Yeah. Then enter stupa or temples. So if they go into a Buddhist temple, yeah, or visit a stupa. Even if they were to say, yeah, but once, Namo Buddhaya, or you chant the Buddha's name, they have realized the Buddha's way. So this is one way of saying you have cultivated affinity with the Buddha, yeah, which is part of the Triple Gem. So here the meaning is, all they have to do is just say one sentence, Namo Buddhaya, or homage to the Buddha. 
from that one recitation, they will ultimately realize Buddhahood. <coughs> so this is the skillful means or way which the Sutta try to give you uh, understanding, faith, and also maybe uh, support your cultivation. For those who believe that it's not easy to become Samasamuddha, here the Sutta say, even if you have a scattered mind, but when you visit Supa or a temple or a way place, you only have to chant eh, Namo Buddhaya or homage to the, the Buddha or Amitabha or Namo Pensu Sujiya Munifo or whatever, even Namo Kwansi Pusa Rasing, you would have cultivated affinity with the great beings, uh, with the triple gem. And with this, it's mentioned in the Sutta from that one recitation when you are there, you are with the faith, sincerity, and you just happen to chant it. Then ultimately, you will have realized Samasamudahun. So basically, it's as simple as that. That's why affinity is very important. Whatever you have done actually adds up. Eh? It will accumulate and develop into a very strong base. Eh? But like all Sutta, eh? it's mentioned in this way so that it can give you the confidence, the attraction eh? to really go for it. Oh, very easy. I just have to resign. Not many times, once at all. But you must understand. These are causes and conditions. So you have done it once. Maybe it triggers some causes and conditions. But after that, you don't do anything. It may be aeons and aeons and aeons. You just don't progress or don't develop any uh, progress. Then when there is affinity or condition during the sasana, when you meet up with the uh, sasana, where the teaching is there, the Aryan disciples are there, maybe the Buddha is there. But the affinity can actually transform into tangible condition for you to be born. Uh, and for you to have the condition to come into contact. And through that life in that sasana is enough to trigger all future causes and conditions. That's why all this can happen. They are possible. So because of that, the sutta is uh, phrased in such a manner as if like, it's not difficult. Uh, like I always share with you all, if you understand, it's not difficult. But if you don't understand, it can be really, really difficult. Uh, you, you can really uh, uh, go astray uh, and miss the whole thing. Maybe if you read on, uh, then you will understand. Yeah, I think Xianhua also mentioned something like that. Here Xianhua say, why is this so? It is because there is a famous Chinese saying, a journey of a thousand miles begins with what? A single step. Uh, actually, this analogy is very good. And this saying is very good. Uh, if that single step you don't take, that journey of a thousand miles will not happen. So that single step is when you play when you pay a visit to any Buddhist temple or way place or a stupa, the first step is to recite Namo Buddhaya or Namo Pensu Si Jia Monifo or Homage to the, the Buddha, uh, the fully enlightened one, uh, the worthy one. Uh, 
So when you recite that, that is the first step you have taken. Then from there, you will move because that step to have faith in the Buddha and his teaching will actually allow you to develop that journey, yeah? which may take maybe not only thousand miles, eons and eons and eons and eons of birth and death and cultivation and perfection. Then Shenhua continued, he said, you want to travel a thousand miles, miles, where do you begin? You begin with the first step. That's like the initial step, the initial planting of the Bohi mind to go this way is very important. So having taken that first step to plant the seed of Bohi, to go the Bodhisattva way, then you can travel, like the saying goes, a thousand miles. So the perfect interpretation of the mind rights, which you begins with the first thought. You wish to become a Buddha, it begins with that very first thought. In that first thought, uh, here is mentioned, you plant the Buddha seed. So you plant the seed of Bohi, eh? means the Bohi seed eh? that will germinate and nurture itself eh? into a Bohi bond. That in the future you will reap the fruit of Buddhahood. So reciting Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabha Buddha, or Namo Sakyamuni Buddha, or Namo Medicine Master Buddha who dispel calamities and lengthen life may seem very easy to do, but such an opportunity is not easy to meet up with. All of you know how to recite the Buddha's name. But think it over. Of all the people in the world are those who do not know how to recite the Buddha's name in the majority or are those who do. You might say that those who know how to recite are as few as the moon and those who do not know how to recite are as many as the stars. Are there more stars or more moons? Those who can recite the Buddha's name are able to do so because they have the good roots from their former life. And all these good roots have matured, enabling them to encounter the Dhamma door of Buddha recitation. So this is uh, the Pure Land tradition, which I think uh, Xianhua eh, tried to uh, introduce. Eh? the Dhamma Dao of Buddha recitation. Yeah. They call it the chanting of the Buddha's name. Yeah. This is Mahayana tradition. Yeah. When the Buddha was in the world, he had a cousin named Devadatta. Devadatta was the Buddha's enemy. He did nothing but oppose the Buddha where he wants to take revenge. The Buddha taught his disciple to eat one meal a day in the middle of the day. But Devadatta was determined to outdo him. So he eat, sorry, so you eat one meal a day, he asked. I teach my disciple to eat one meal every hundred days. Sakyamuni Buddha taught his disciple to be vegetarian and not to eat meat. Devadatta said, no, only do I teach my disciple to re refrain from eating meat. They do not even consume salt. 
This was done merely to prove that no matter what the Buddha did, Devadatta was always higher than the Buddha. Here is, I think, the English uh, translation problem. Uh, maybe when he spoke in Mandarin, it's not like that. Uh, when he talked about Devadatta, the cousin, uh, Devadatta, because of one life in the distant past when he was selling bangers, Sakyamuni Buddha, at that time also a Bodhisattva, was also selling bangers, uh, a merchant. Then there was a boy, I think, with the grandmother. So the boy was so interested in buying the bangles. Then the grandmother, out of love and all those things, was willing to buy the bangles. But she has no money. What she has was only a old golden pot, actually. Yeah, she didn't know it was a golden pot. Yeah. Then when she went with the grandchild and asked Devadatta, who was the bangles seller, whether he would sell the bangles to the grandchild or not. So Devadatta looked at the pot and knew it was gold, yeah, but he still was reckoning. He wanted to like optimize it. He said, well, your this pot is not worth much. If you are interested, maybe I give you a few bangles. Yeah. Then you can exchange it. Yeah. Then you give me the pot, I will give you the bangles. Yeah. So the granny was actually not too willing to part off with that pot because only a few bangles. Then the granny said, never mind. They walk away. So Devadatta thought they will come back to him because there is nobody around to sell Benga. But they met up with Sakyamuni Buddha at that time was a Bodhisattva. And Sakyamuni Buddha being very sincere, very truthful, very honest. When he saw the thing, he said, this is a golden pot. You could have bought more than what I have here. All the bangles I can give to you. It's not enough to pay you. The granny was so happy. He said, don't worry about the pot. They say, you can have it as long as you give the bangers to my grandchildren. So after that thing happened, Devadatta later came to know that the pot was with the Bodhisattva. So he was so furious and full of anger. He wanted to go after the Bodhisattva to get back the pot. <laughs> but the Bodhisattva has crossed the river. So he, according to the Jagadaka story, he actually make a very strong vow. Life after life, he wants to go after the Bodhisattva uh, to take revenge for what he has done and all that. And because of that, they continue to take birth together, almost life after life. Uh, until even when the Sakyamuni Buddha become the Samasa Buddha, he became the cousin. That's why his evil intent from the past created all this condition for him to actually cause Sikhism to the Sangha and all those things. So at that time, out of bad faith, because Devadatta wanted to take over the Buddha's room, uh, want to ask the Buddha to retire so that he can replace the Buddha and control the order. So he tried to project huh, a situation where he is more austere or the holier than Tao thing. Eh? So he forced the Buddha into a few situations. He said, those followers of mine, they are all vegetarian, but the Buddha doesn't insist that the disciple must go vegetarian because the Buddha has his reason. Their tradition is to go for arms round, pin the bhagavata. So you receive arms offered, so you cannot be choosy, you cannot make life difficult for the offerer. 
and during that time it's not easy to receive vegetarian food. So the Buddha introduced the Patimoka. As long as allowable food means satisfy the three conditions. The Mayana call it the San Ching Ro, the three type of allowable meat. Pu Jian Sa, Pu Wen Sa, Pu Wei Wo Sa. Means you don't see how it's killed. Then you don't hear the killing. Then it's not killed to be offered to you or for you. So if it satisfies these three conditions, it's supposed to be allowable. Huh? But my teacher, Ajahn Yantra, when he ordained and become a monk, he decided to become vegetarian. Uh, so he has this mindfulness and then he will ask, is this meat? Uh, then meat, he say, never mind, this one don't offer. You offer the one without meat. Uh, he, 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 he don't even want to take those meat. Uh, that satisfy the three conditions and all really. It's because he has his vow and his understanding. So at that time I saw him in the part that time I was with him and on many occasions I observed him and I saw this is what he do. So this part outdo and all those things is based on that Jataka story. So here the English translation is not so good. So I will read on it. But no matter how hard he tried, he never could recite the Buddha's name. So Shen Hong make it so bad. Huh? <laughs> if you try to teach him to recite, he would refuse to do so. So all his life, all he ever did was commit offenses. And this is taking it a bit too much. Huh? Continuously opposing the Buddha. The real thing is not like that. Actually, initially, he was quite okay. Even at the, he developed a lot of psychic ability, jhana. Uh, and he, he was quite uh, good in his uh, that so-called meditation. Huh? And he managed to recruit quite a lot of followers under him and all those things. Yeah. But because of his karmic past, that's why he got into all this entanglement. Uh, here, I think Xianhua described it in a manner which is a bit far-fetched. Yeah? When his evil karma had finally reached the point of overflowing, he went to hell, uh, alive. <laughs> Means the ground opened up like a quick and straight away to Aviji hell. Uh, going to hell alive means that in his very flesh body he went to hell just as he was about to go to hell just as he was at the gate of hell I means about to go down eh? he thought of to recite the buddha's name so he wanted to recite it but he could not get a sound out of it all he could scream was namo eh? He could not say the word Buddha over there. His coming obstacle bound him up so tightly that he could not say the Buddha's name. So Sakyamuni Buddha saw him and said, He is really pitiful. But do not look at him lightly. When he is finished with his punishment, and this is a prediction in the hell, uh, his punishment in the hell. Eh? Sakyamuni Buddha predict in the distant future he will still become a Pacheka Buddha. <laughs> this one I don't know whether Sunhua added no. <laughs> this him. His Buddha's name will be simply Namo. Uh, it is because he resigned Namo as he fell into hell. As a Pacheka Buddha, he will be called Namo. So do not look at it as all so simple or easy and think I can recite the Buddha's name whenever I feel like it. Uh, not like that. Huh? 
you miss the opportunity, the condition, then you no longer have that ability. Right now, you are not blocked by any coming obstruction. When they obstruct you, if you try to resign, you will not be able to do so. So this is something that cultivator of the way yeah, should have understanding. When you have the causes and conditions, you better do all the affirmation, yeah, aditan or whatever. Yeah. And with faith, sincerity, yeah, vow and develop all this affirmation. Yeah. There is another story about reciting the Buddha's name. When the Buddha was in the world, there was a very poor old man. He saw Sakyamuni Buddha accompanied by his 1,250 disciples going out every day for arms round. And he thought it was not bad. Every day they went out with their arms bow, seek, uh, requesting for arms, come back and eat, come back and eat, and that was all there was to eat. Very well, he thought, I will also leave home. He thought the bhikkhu were very comfortable and did not have to do any work, no bitterness, and nothing bothers them, very pure and free. So he decided to leave home and went to Jeta Grove to ask for permission to be ordained. But that day the Buddha had gone out to accept arms round for lunch. As for the Buddha's disciple, some had opened their Buddha's eye. Some had opened their wisdom eye, some had opened their Dhamma eye, and some have the five eyes and the six spiritual penetration. Others have certified to the first, second, third, and fourth stage of Arahanship or sainthood. Now to open the eyes is not to certify to the fruit. When people have opened their Buddha eye, this is called the penetration obtained from virtue. This happened because in previous life, one has cultivated the 42 hands and the Surangama mantra a great deal. This Dhamma door brings about that reward. But this is definitely not the same as certifying to the first fruit, second, third, or fourth fruits. Arahat who has certified to the fruit can see the operation of cause and effect throughout. 80,000 great aeons. Those who have opened their Buddha's eye or their wisdom eye may be able to see as far as one life, two life, three life, five life, ten life, hundred life, a thousand life, or ten thousand life, but they cannot see as far as 80,000 great aeons. Certified Arahats, however, can see all the causes and effects of 80,000 great aeons. When the poverty stricken old man came to leave the home life, the disciples, the great arahats, contemplated and observed his potential to see if he was fit to leave home. They saw that this person in the last 80,000 great aeons had never made an offering to the Buddha. He had never bowed to the Buddha, had never recited the Buddha's name, or uttered even a tiny sound of praise as an offering to the Buddha, or a single flower, or even put his hand together, or wave his hand, or even nod his head, since he had no merits and virtue. How could he live the home life? It is said. Don't say that leaving home is easy to do. It is the result of planting the causes of Bohi throughout many lives. Those who left, sorry, those who leave home 
must have planted good roots in many lives and have brought forth the Bohi mind or Bohi heart. It's not just a matter of thinking about it. I would like to leave home and doing it. If you do not have the good roots, you might want to go forth or to leave the home life, but obstacle will arise. You might leave home for one or two days and then return to lay life. You might leave home for one or two years or three years, five years or ten years and then return to lay life and not leave home again. Such things do happen. So do not think leaving home is very simple. So the Arahat saw that he had not planted good roots in the last 80 great aeons and therefore would not be able to leave home. They told him, you cannot renounce. You are too old, you cannot cultivate. It would be best for you to go back to wherever you came from. Do not stay here. Hearing this, the old man was overcome with grief. On the one hand, he walked, and on the other, he thought. I thought living home would be very simple. I never would have guessed that the Buddha's disciple would refuse me. Probably they would not accept me because I am old and poor. Well, if they would not accept me, I will just go jump into the sea and drown and end it all. Then still walking and weeping, he made his way to the sea to commit suicide. But just as he was about to jump, Along came Sakyamuni who said, Oh man, why are you throwing yourself into the sea? I want to leave home, the old man re replied. I went to Jeta Grove to do so. But the Buddha was not there and the disciple would not accept me. As far as I am concerned, there is really nothing joyful in human existence. I would rather just hurry up and end my life. My life is meaningless. Then Sakyamuni Buddha said, So you want to leave home? That is not a problem. Come back with me. I will allow you to leave home. The old man returned with the Buddha, left home, cultivated, and after just a few days certified to the fruit of Arahanshi. The Buddha's disciple did not understand all this. He said, How strange, they thought. This person had no good roots. How could he be certified to Arahanship. He has not done a single good deed throughout the last 80,000 great aeons. How could the Buddha permit him to leave the home life? They questioned the Buddha and the Buddha gave them this explanation. You Arahant can only see the cause and effect of the last 80,000 great aeons. What happened outside that you do not know. This old man over 80,000 eons ago was a poor firewood gardener in the mountain. One day he met with a tiger just as the tiger was about to beat him. In his great fear he screamed, Namo Buddhaya. That one recitation scared the tiger away and so he was not eaten. The seed planted by that single recitation of Namo Buddhaya has now matured as the good roots which have enabled him to leave the home life and certify to the fruit of Aranship. So from the look of this, we can tell that it is not easy to leave the home life even when you want to renounce. Uh, it may not be so straightforward or easy we are these are coming obstruction which will come yeah, because based on what I understand from all the sharing is you see that good roots yeah, that you develop it has its causes and condition yeah, for it to like uh, reach the point of friction yeah. So, 
what I think the sutta here trying to explain to you is you go the sainthood way, you may think you understand, know a lot of things, you can see past life and all these things. But there is a limit to what they can understand because the sainthood way basically is less extensive than the Buddha's way, the supreme way. So because of that, there are many uh, other factors or causes and conditions behind which they may not know. So here the example I think is taken a bit fast, fresh, stretch. <laughs> he talked about 80 great aeons. Means the Arahant can see and if beyond that he cannot. But that life before that 80 great aeons, he happened to meet up with a tiger and recited. So it is like, uh, I think the commentary here by Xuan Hua is meant to explain certain things. But maybe this is what he also read up and he just shared. But very likely, the way I look at it, all this it depends on one's ability to understand. For me, if there is causes and conditions of karmic obstruction, those who have cultivated long enough, they will know. When there is no condition for things to happen, it will not happen. But when there is condition for things to happen, it will just happen. That's it. Then moreover, for cultivators of the way who have the understanding, yeah, like the hallmark of winning. Yeah. Of course, the first hallmark is the state of no thought. Yeah. Means you cultivate with a true mind, then you develop the understanding, enlightenment. Then you go beyond that to realize the second hallmark of winning. No mark. No mark of a self cultivating, no mark of others, and no mark of life, existence, Dhamma, everything. Because within the unconditioned, all this does not exist. Yeah. So when you understand all these no marks, then there is no reality in existence. He know you, he know me. Yeah. Like everything is within nature's condition, empty, dependent, originating condition, right? Cause of phenomena, not what you think. So causes and conditions are like unending, infinite. So how can you have that all-knowing understanding? But when you have the wisdom, when you have perfected the perfection, that all this become possible. So it depends on the parami and the extent of cultivation. So all this, as a cultivator of the way, as you progress beyond the normal sainthood way and go beyond the, what they call the normal cultivation, then you will develop all this understanding. So we go back to the sutta. I have to end already. I think almost 9.45, I will read on. Also in India, there was a certain outside way sect whose member made offering to the image of a heavenly spirit. The heavenly spirit body was made of wood and of clay, but the head was made of gold. Once a thief wanted to steal the head, but when he went to take it, the awful virtue of the spiritual, heavenly spiritual Oh, sorry, heavenly spirit, make him afraid. In his fear, he thought to recite Namo Buddhaya. The recitation dispelled his fear because it has struck the heavenly spirit of his awesome virtue. So fearlessly then, he stole off with the Buddha, the golden head. Later on, everybody said, take a look at this heavenly spirit. 
everyone believe it. They say it is not the least bit efficacious. If it were, how could it have had its head stolen? It is useless to believe it. When they say this, the heavenly spirit came alone and took possession of a person's body. Sometimes spirit gave off an efficacious energy and if it takes possession of someone, the victim will become senseless as if they were drunk since they take control of the physical body. The spirit began to, to speak through the medium and say, It is not that I am not efficacious. When the thief came, he was afraid to take my head. But when he recited Namo Buddha, the whole area was flooded with Buddha's light, and I could not even open my eye. I was unable to protect my head. That's how he managed to steal it. It is certainly not the case that I am not efficacious. But the awesome virtue of the Buddha is even greater than mine. And so I had no way to protect my head. So that was the commentary. Eh? Hearing this, one may wonder, did the Buddha assist the thief to steal the golden head uh, of the heavenly spirit? Did he aid him to do this evil karma? <laughs> no. The thief recited the Buddha's name. The merits and virtue that come from reciting the Buddha's name is inconceivable. Whether a good person or an evil person recites, it has the same effect. It is not the case that when an evil person recites, there is no merits or virtue. But when a good person recites, there is. The merits and virtue is the same. So even though he was a thief, and he still come to the Buddha, and his recitation enable him to steal the heavenly spirit's gold head, a golden head. The Buddha certainly was not helping him to be a thief. Rather, he was helping him to perfect his good root. So this is Chenhua's commentary. Or eh? oh, still a lot more. I think we, we read the next line, then we stop. You say if he steal, <coughs> how can he have good roots? <coughs> So this one you have to understand that eh? every action you do, there are causes and conditions. So the stealing and all those things, <coughs> he has to be responsible for all those. Uh, but the recitation of Namo Buddhaya, that is what the Sutta is trying to point out to you. Whether you are virtuous or not virtuous, you say that eh, out of what they call sincerity and faith. Or you say it at the time when it has its efficacy, then it will manifest. It will manifest. Yeah. So here, I think, uh, once you have this understanding, then you will know that all this, although it's shared in such a manner, like it's a bit far fresh, but it has its principles behind. Okay, we stop here. So we stop at this line. Take a look at this line of the Dhamma Flower Sutta. Okay, we stop here. I will mark this page. Okay, so now we will continue our second session, which is meditation reporting followed by Q&A. Good evening, Brother yeah. Tio. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Tiu and fellow Kayamitas, yeah. I would like to share my uh, meditation experience. Ah, good. Start your, yeah. yeah. So just now when we started, I I just sit down mm -hmm. and I start to breathe. Yeah, yeah. Normally. I mean, breathe uh, out. Yeah. Then I felt a little bit tired on my legs, yes. so I unfold. Ah, no problem. Oh. Yeah, just stretch it out. Huh? And, I, Relax and I just it. press my back at the back yeah. of the, yeah, the wall. sofa. Uh, the sofa. Wall. Yeah. Uh. So it was very quick. Yeah. I, think, I think just less than one minute. Uh. I just uh, set it down. Set it down, yeah. Start to, uh. And I think, I think just nothing, just nothing. Yeah. 
very quiet. Yeah, just ah, nothing. Very quiet. Ah. But there were there were sequences where I think I dozed off a bit. Ah, no I, problem. I, ah, no problem. Then yeah. later on you will come back because yeah. you are tired. Yeah. Ah, when you are tired, you will like uh, lapse into the sleepy state, or they call the unconscious or the subconscious. It's okay. You let it go in. Ah. Then you will come out aware because your body is tired. Uh, sometimes I remember during the early day when I'm very tired. Uh, if I try to keep up with the cultivation, uh, I can feel it when I know it's the body tired, I need to rest. So I will rest one. I will just rest. Uh, then after that, the awareness will come back. Uh, so when you can rest by completely you don't have to even maintain the awareness. Uh, you completely rest inside there. Uh, and that mind state is very beautiful when you know how to rest. It means you completely relax. That's why when you stretch out your leg, when you feel the extension or what, you stretch out and relax. Then you lean against the wall. Then it becomes like very natural at ease. And then you settle down very far. Where you know how to be with it and relax. And then immediately the awareness will come in because you have that training before and understanding before then it will settle down very fast yeah, which is very good and i'm, I'm very um, what i want to share is actually this is uh i'm more aware that i'm not thinking correct <laughs> yes because this morning i was doing my walk yeah yeah Sadu. i tried ah. to that one very useful, yeah. Yeah, but I, I could not because my mind was just continue thinking. Oh, correct. The thought left, is there. Yeah. Right. Then yes. I tried to bring it to the center, then less than one, two seconds. Yeah, here, it right? ran off again. Yeah. But just off now it was uh, really yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was... You can see the difference because when you are able to be in that state of awareness, especially after you have developed some ability to meditate earlier on, then because you are working, the condition is like that. When you are working, when you try to settle down, it's not easy one. But after you have developed the ability, when you are completely like off your work, when you want to meditate or settle down, you will develop that skill one, which I came to know when I test myself, I went out to the consultant, you remember? I gave it the, what they call, uh, test and I investigate in the way. So when I was a consultant, I got a lot of things to do because I just came out from the government statutory body, a very comfortable job. And I went to an environment which is completely like private sector, a lot of work and all those things. Then I have to go through those things. Yeah. But then my mind has reached a state where I I cannot do the normal reading and thinking radio. I have to develop the awareness to be aware. And most of the time, even the reading, like telling me, if you want to suffer, you continue to read and all those things. So that's why I told you all, I learned to write down things. I try to read, then I look for the important dates and the important point. I write it down, write it down, write it down, so that I don't have to remember anything. Then through that, the activity that I do throughout the day, of course, you can still feel tired at the end of the day. But a lot of work, a lot of things to do, a lot of things to resolve, then phone call, meeting, minutes, or even to read through the minutes to glance through because of my experience and all those things. I still find it, uh, I need to do something to develop the understanding and all those things. And because of that, end of the day when I went home, and sometimes I still got uh, what they call the routine, uh, religious routine. So when I reach home, when I want to develop the homage and the meditation, so I sit. The moment I sit, I saw the Sankara moving. Uh. <laughs> like when you are doing your walking, you know, all the thought moving around. Then, because I understand, I just smile. <laughs> I do not react. There was no aversion, nothing. I just smile. Then I understand. I just silent. 
That's why I can share with you all. Relax, silent, aware, don't do anything. Then I saw all these things slow down until it settled down. Then within one or two minutes, or like two or three minutes, the whole thing back to the meditative state again. Yeah. That's the skill that one will develop once you have the understanding. Yeah. That's why to me, understanding is more important than all the practice, practice, practice and training. Of course, the repetitive type of training is useful too so that it can get you settled down yeah, and develop the what they call uh, the reverse conditioning yeah, so that you have a skillful mean like your anapanasati which is very good you go into it because you know how to relax and you know how to be with it allow the awareness or sati to settle down and settle in when you are just aware there is no thought then you go into that quiet state very fast this is what meditation is all about awareness is all about so how you actually approach it is not important the more important thing is the understanding of it the moment you are relaxed at ease no thought then the mindfulness will come in then the mindfulness can be to the breath or to your heart wherever there is any vibration or movement or your heartbeat or whatever you just anchor it there stay there yeah. then like the breathing just away means that phenomena and your awareness move as one it can be a heartbeat or a vibration or whatever, or any of the movement within your car. Yeah. Yeah. Then you just stay there. Yeah. So this understanding is very important. Once you have this understanding, meditation is not a problem at all. Then you will know how to relax, you will know how to rest, you will know how to sleep. Then you will know how to develop the sensitivity to relax. Well, which part not relax, you will also know. Yeah. So all this is what the meditative understanding can actually help us uh, as cultivator of the way. Uh, good. Uh, uh, you continue. Sorry. Uh. Okay. And uh, the other one is, uh, I find it very easy and conducive ah. to do it here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I also encourage all fellow Kaiomitas if there's opportunity. Yeah, better for come. Class or yeah. join the retreat. Yeah, join the retreat. Yeah. Yeah. This it's is very different. Different. Uh, it's like a magic hall here. <laughs> because the vibration, the wisdom energy, the what they call uh, nature's condition around here, different. It's very different. Yeah. So, for those who have the ability to develop the faith and the understanding, and you have come here before, you will know. Even the retreat, the eight to nine days, very big difference. Yeah. That's why I already told you all, this coming retreat will be very different, uh, very different. The way we share it, the way we go through it, and the way Kayamita will understand and transform, very different. But now we have reached a stage where the Kayamita force and the consciousness of the Kayamita is at a very different level. Uh, the understanding part is there. So by just listening, you can break free actually. Yeah. Then if you really settle down and develop the awareness nature within, you transform very fast. You become very different. And the cessation can come, can just come. Yeah. Yeah. So all these are what they call beautiful causes and conditions that has a reason. Yeah. So you have the, what they call, uh, luxury of time and all those things. You can really attend. It will be beneficial and useful. Yeah. But don't force. Yeah. If because of certain circumstances you are not able to, don't worry. Yeah. I know Hui Rong already commit to the three pin Nepal. Nepal. <laughs> then uh, Polian also same. Yeah. Supposed to go India. God place. Ah. 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 They will let me know. Huh? Uh, we reserve a place for you. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah, Colin. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's what sadu. I feel like sharing. Lah. Yeah, yeah, very and good. That's all from my side. Yeah, sadu, sadu. We all rejoice. Huh? Sadu, sadu, sadu. Good evening, Brother Till, yeah. Mr. Still, and all calamitous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, perhaps I will talk about today's subject. We ah. talk about uh, uh, all this karmic and yeah, all that, yeah, that karmic yeah. obstruction. Karmic obstruction. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, especially now, I can see. It, uh, I can see it very clearly. Mm. Uh, we we may think that we we are doing the right thing. Mm. But as we, as I cultivate, okay, mm. I can see that things that I have been thinking, Bratio, mm. especially negative things, mm. it comes up for me to see very clearly. Yeah, sadhu. <laughs> that is one of the op main obstructions yeah, which yeah, I yeah. do not want to tell out loud. Yeah, yeah, no very, need. Very yeah. malu, okay? <laughs> Never mind, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was something I said to somebody. Mm, yeah. You should not be doing this. Yeah, it yeah. will. That's why you find it very hard to progress. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Brazil, it come and haunt you. It uh. come and hit me. Yeah, haunt you. The yeah. Same, uh, same way. Same way. Yeah. yeah. That's why coming, you can see one. Really, one. You read what you saw one. Whatever you do, come back to you one. Uh, so I I never uh, thought that it will happen to me, and it really shows to me. Yeah, it will happen. Right? Uh. Don't don't talk. Yeah, <laughs> it can happen to anybody. In, in the early day, I remember certain thing I want to say. Uh, inside warned me already. Uh, this thing you cannot say. Uh. So the moment I say, our uh, finish. I told you all before the motorbike on uh, Yeah, I got an accident in the federal highway, the pothole on. Uh, because we were actually. Just normal you know, discussion among uni friends and all say. Then they were talking about driving motorbike and all those things. So that time I mean it's a fact that I was very good as a motorbike driver. I can actually drive the bike very well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes two hands no need to hold also can. Yeah. But because the accelerator there I need to hold the accelerator. Yeah, I say Inside there, warn me, I cannot say on this one. It's like uh, something to do with the ego. Uh, I, I am so skillful, I said. Since I got my license until now, uh, I have never had any problem with the motorbike, no accident, nothing. The moment I say that, uh, inside, already warn me. You cannot already. Then after that, I was very careful. You know. Then I was telling myself, cannot be on. You know. When I was driving, I was so skillful. No way it can happen or no. My mind told me. That night, uh, the Federal Highway, uh, that time was two lane only. You know, one lane up, one lane down, not the new one. A lot of pothole on the side. So the lighting also not so good. Huh? I was coming back from Brickfield, you know. That all of a sudden, uh, the motorbike hit the pothole. Palm. Actually, both my hand uh, went off my my motorbike's uh, handle there. Then, because of that impact, uh, it its momentum moved my whole body forward. No, then my motorbike actually uh, went off. Luckily, no car, nothing. But my hand, <laughs> I I kena a bit lah. I go back I to put all the, uh, you call it, you call it what yellow lotion I went to the clinic. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, so they dress me up, but not serious. That's why like after that, uh, whenever the awareness inside they want me, uh, I won't say it really. Uh, I will keep quiet or change topic already. Otherwise, inside there, you want, you want. Uh, but you must have the ability. That time I meditate until I was very sensitive already. Uh, so it warned me. Also from my past. That's why a lot of things. Mine is actually nothing negative one. But certain thing in nature is like that. You cannot say means you cannot say. Uh. You say 
it has its repercussion on. Yeah. Then for uh, PJ's case, it's different. Yeah. Where that one, uh, you you say all those things to people, uh, it will come back and haunt you. Uh, where it is coming on. Uh, that one uh, that one is coming on. Uh. It's just like when I steal the two ringgit from my mother. Oh. I didn't know the effect until after I took the money. After I took the money, I don't feel good. Yeah. But the thought, like I always tell you, uh, the conscience said, wrong, <laughs> cannot do that. But the thought cunning, no. The Ang Pao got 12 ringgit, uh, I take two, my mother would know. Let that justify. Uh. So I passed the 10 ringgit to my mother, I took the two ringgit. That was the first time New Year I got four ringgit. Uh, where my father always give all the children two ringgit each. But at that time, two ringgit is a lot of money. I don't think two ringgit is small money. So normally with two ringgit, I can actually win a lot of money. Uh. That year, that year, I tell you, the moment I take the two ringgit, uh, before even Choi yet, uh, I lost everything. And the card uh, really, uh, Show it to you or no, like whole chair or no, it's because of what I did. No, it's for me to see on all this. Uh, so, when I was young, I saw all this. Then, I saw how when I do my duty, I help my parents look after the shop, clean up the house. Then, I am the main one that help out on. Then, I realized my luck very good, uh, my one hey very good, but. Provided I don't break the precept and I don't do all those funny things. Uh, so, certain things I cannot do. Like, my mother asked me to kill the cat, uh, the mouse, not the cat. <laughs> I cannot do it. Then, there are many other things that I realized when I was young. It's like, show it to me. Like, the out of the body experience. It's meant for me to see. So, all this... Like what PG go through, when you have the mindfulness and the awareness, you start to see them. You start to be aware of them. And then like God starts to learn all this. So cultivation is the same. They are coming obstruction. They are understanding that you can develop. Then with all this understanding, you actually develop the understanding to become a better cultivator. To become a cultivator that have the understanding so that you know how to avoid all these unnecessary pitfall and what they call negativity of mind state that may arise as you cultivate. So until finally it like let me understand when I grew up after 1988 I think just before 89, before I I developed the connection and the awakening. I remember that time, uh, my mind was different already. Uh. I already know I have reached the level of understanding where a lot of things cannot affect me already. Then very funny, you know, during that time. Whatever I do, uh, the thought, uh, it's like very powerful, you know. When I arise that thought, uh, it will have its effect on you know, immediate on, immediate one, keep on coming on. Huh. Then it show it to me until uh, the understanding uh, you have to believe this is the nature's law. Like in Hokkien I always say Bo Kalu Bo Sin. It's like that one. Cannot violate one. It's nature's law. Yeah. All this understanding. You cannot buy there. That's why after that, that understanding transform. Then from then onward, my mind become different. Then, nineteen eighty nine is what happened. My nature actually connect. Then I inherited my whatever cultivation from the spiritual nature. And when that one come, a lot of thing happen. Uh, a lot of understanding just is just like come back to my nature. And it's like I tell you all, it's like I breathe through. Uh, you know what is breathe uh, without effort? Uh. No, no, breathe. Means, means uh, 
like like a breeze, eh? you just breeze through. Like no need effort. Eh? It just pass through. It's like the cultivation no need effort. Eh? You reach the understanding and all the things. Uh, no need to learn, no need to practice, no need to cultivate. Eh? All the understanding just come back to me. Then I can see all this and understand all this. That's how the 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 what they call you inherit from your spiritual nature. But before I connect, cannot. I I still need to cultivate like a normal person. But of course, the karmic nature protect me and look after a lot of things. But when it comes to wisdom, I still need to cultivate like a normal person, normal living being. But the moment I connect, it's a different story. The spiritual nature, very different. It just come, it just come. Then this nature just understand. Oh, then that time I remember, everything is Dhamma. Whatever I do, it unfold into understanding. That's why I say like, I breathe through all the understanding come back to me. And things that I never learned this life, I have the understanding one. That's why I can share with you all, share with all the cultivators of the way that I can develop a lot of understanding of whoever who come and ask me questions or learn from me and all those things. Whatever your background, this nature has the understanding. So all this, you ask me, I never learned this life. With this life, not only nobody taught me, my teacher also don't teach me all this. Then how did I know all this? Like asking for forgiveness, yeah? setting up all this, yeah? the whatever cultivation and the understanding of the sutta. That I never learned this life. Moreover, I was English educated. <laughs> how to learn all this Mahayana teaching? I cannot learn. My Mandarin is like very limited. But then, through the commentaries in English, when I read the English, whether it has the Dhamma or not, whether it's right or wrong, my nature know. How can I know? It's because when I inherit, all this understanding come back to me. Wherever there is truth, they will like have an imprint in me. My nature like recognize it, and there's a lot of joy. Yeah. Then I saw the beauty of it and all this thing. Oh, like, like it just unfold. Yeah. Normal people read also to know what it is. Oh, even the person who share it may have recited it, but they don't have the understanding. That's why they cannot penetrate. So all this is what cultivation is all about. So regarding PG sharing is very good. Eh? The first initial step is ability to see this coming thing, then in future, you become very tactful, you become very different, you will not go that old way, which is heedless, means your speech become different, the way you arise the speech, that's how noble evil power come to be, the right appropriate speeches, means you no longer arise uh, what they call wrong speech and coupled with the understanding the way you express it your nature will know and it will prompt you, it will, from inside you know, it will prompt you, you know. it, it, it will give you the understanding and the sign, you know. it, it like communicate with you, you, know. you can sense it you know, at your heart area but you need to meditate until you locate the gateway then this one open up, then this one becomes sensitive. And then that, that nature inside there, it will have the ability to understand and it will guide you. Yeah. So this is what uh, cultivation is all about when you have developed the ability. So now we go back to PG. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bratil. Huh? I think it's a lesson to me Mm. Uh, in the sense that uh, to be careful with what I think yeah. and say yes. or do. Yes. It it is very clear, brother. Yes. Like yes. you say, uh, when I do things, I know, gone la, You yeah, sure yeah, can yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. is, it is that clear to me. But yes. you see, the mind will always, like you say, yeah, justify. justify. Uh, justify. Ah, yeah, this one, no problem. Uh. <laughs> I uh. think it's 
the conditioning from all the years of working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, thinking that we are probably smart enough to get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, what I learned is first thing is to be humble. Mm, that was very important. Yes, yeah. To be humble. Mm. Uh, not not thinking that we know a lot of things. Yes. And uh, especially when we do the cultivation, mm. uh, like Bertie always say, don't be complacent. Yeah, don't be complacent. Yeah. Uh. And uh, like recently, uh, last week after I come back from Penang, mm. I started off with my Bodhisattva vows again, mm, mm. and. It was so easy to chant back again. Oh, wow, sadhu, yeah. sadhu. Uh, yeah. It just take me probably one day looking at the thing and I can chant again without mm, using sadhu, the paper. Sadhu, sadhu, at the sheet. Uh. Yeah. yeah, so I, I come to understand too that how important it is to plant the seed of Bohi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because as I chant, uh, especially, uh, I would say all of it, uh, It mm. is so meaningful. Yeah, yeah. And uh, especially the part where we ask for forgiveness. Mm, yes. It is. Uh, I I I even uh, feel that it's necessary to add the part where I ask for forgiveness for all those that I I have caused karmic negativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and suffering. Suffering and misery. Yeah. Huh? Uh, Because I feel that God alone knows how yeah, much yeah, suffering yeah, I've yeah. caused. Yeah, in you know? the past. Yeah, uh, from the past, past to now. You know, Even yeah. now, like, causing yeah, a lot yeah. of suffering to <laughs> others too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's our, I think it's our awareness mm. yeah, as yeah. we cultivate. Mm. We, we learn, we understand, and hopefully we put this into practice. And that it helps in our cultivation. Mm. Otherwise, what's the point of us, you know, going through life, life after life, going like uh, so meaningless, lah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I am very thankful of this opportunity to learn the true Dharma. Mm. You know. Yeah. And uh, whatever way that I may. Or should I say the the state of cultivation that I may I don't like to use the word achieve lah, but mm, uh, mm, mm. Uh, understanding, understanding use the word yeah. understanding that you have come to develop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just very thankful because mm. whatever I do in this life, it will help me in my. Next slide. Yeah, future. Yeah, my yeah. future. Yeah, that right understanding during the sasana period is very, very useful, very powerful. Yeah. And you will never be able to comprehend the extent of its virtue and merits until later on in your cultivation. Then you will come to know, oh, that was the golden window that actually deliver the bulk of the what they call perfection cultivation and success that is the one that actually caused the movement uh, in that direction that's why i say don't miss out this golden window opportunity where the sasana is there uh, do not be heedless do not be complacent When you have the condition, like they say, "power," uh, is it? Huh? Power, power. See? Um, see the opportunity, yeah. Chance. Chance, yeah, yo. Oh, opportunity, yeah. Power, that that affinity and that condition that you have. You must make full use of it, because once you let it slip by, uh, like I used to, uh, I think in a very subtle way, I sound it to you many times. If you miss this window, do you know the next window you have to wait 
very, very, very long. You remember? It's because during this sasana, when you have the condition, if you don't develop the what they call faith, sincerity, and the bohi mind to aditana, to have this right view, right understanding, and commit yourself to the bodhisattva vow or the thing, then you are not actually protected. Protected in the sense that if you don't have this commitment, will he mind develop until so stable? Then in the immediate future after this sasana, you will get lost because you don't have this understanding. So when you plant the seed of Bohi and determine that in the future, whether you have to come or you choose to come or you have to come, you will have all this right view and right understanding. Yeah? It will accompany you. So you follow exactly what I wrote in the yellow card. Uh, you want to have the understanding of this essential basic dhamma. Uh, the rupang anichang, rupang anatta, sanya anichang, sanya anatta, vedana, and all those things, the five angry. Then the two aspects of the five angry for my mind. Uh, then all the what they call uh, important dhamma understanding that you have developed this life. Uh, like the coming nature, the spiritual nature, uh, the law of dependent origination, Patija Samopana, all those things, then all the essential Dhamma, then awareness nature. All so you develop all this and make the Aditan so that life after life, whenever you arise, whether you choose to come or you have to come, all this right view, right understanding will be with you. Then you make that Bodhisattva vow the three sets of pure precept. Then you ask for forgiveness from all the karmic thing. Yeah. Follow exactly this one, the yellow uh, card. This one is the message that Maitreya want me to actually transmit to the world. Yeah. So, Zhen Fa got two. The true Dhamma is the teaching is number one. The second one is the Bodhisattva way, following this understanding. And this is a shortcut. This one, in the sense there is a shortcut, is because when you come with this understanding, life after life means whether got sasana or no sasana, you don't have to worry. This understanding will unfold. The bohi mind that you have planted will nurture inside and move then even without sasana, this understanding will arise. That is the difference. So when this one happens, means no need to wait for the next sasana. As you transform, by the time you reach the next sasana, you will definitely be born during the sasana. Okay? And by then, your nature can be as powerful as my nature already. If you really commit yourself and develop all this understanding. And this is what can happen. That's why Maitreya want this to come out. Yeah. And this one, I think so far, I haven't seen it written or mentioned by anybody yet. Yeah. So this is where the understanding can make a big difference. Yeah. Then don't be complacent. Yeah. Like what PG went through, I think it's very good. Because every time you go back, Penang is like distracted, coming out of suction because sister, knees and all thing, a lot of commitment, everything. Then it's not so conducive as when she is alone in uh, the condo she is staying. <laughs> I think somewhere near. Uh, not Kota Damansara, the place. Uh, uh, Kota Damansara, huh? near our Plangi. Huh? So that condition is different. Well, once she come back here, she go back to the routine, huh? follow the yellow career. Within one day, huh? the faith, everything come back. Huh? Then she can do it already. Huh? So all this is because earlier on, 
he did the thing until it's quite stable. Yeah. Then, of course, the complacency when she's back in Penang, that period she saw the deterioration, then she saw the coming up. All these are meant to be prepare her so that she has the understanding, so that she determine and commit. Yeah. And how she come also because of Jubolian. <laughs> Chibolia was the one that brought her, and now she wants to help back Chibolia. So the two have the good affinity. Uh, there are many Kayamita, I realize, you all have your causes and conditions. Uh, and this asana, no matter what you do, it has already helped you all a lot, transform and uh, benefited your nature a lot. But you can make it very strong, like I said, uh, once and for all, this line determine very strongly until the Bohemaya planted with such faith and confidence uh, and understanding and sincerity uh, until it's very strongly determined. No? Like, like you, you really are the time. No? You are. Then this one will go in one. No? Let's say no? It go in until uh, that nature inside there is awakened. Uh, then it will be there already. Uh, you don't have to worry already. Then all this understanding, uh, like what PG do, uh, no need to look at the kala. She know how to recite the whole thing. Uh, and you do it every day for three months, six months. Stabilize it. Then after that, just let it be. Then after a lapse of another three to six months, you try to come back and do. Then you realize one day, like what happened at the PG, within one day, the whole thing come back to you. Uh, then later on, no need to look at this thing. That thing is with you all the time. Uh, means you are already set, very stable already. So all this can unfold already. Okay? So this is hopefully uh, the message that Kayamita will have developed so that this line, it can make a big difference to your cultivation. I used to share by saying, once you do this, all of your future coming will be taken care of. You remember? Not only this line, all of your future coming. Your, it evolves your entire existence, understand, no? birth and death, until maybe the full perfection of Samasa Buddhahood. All of this birth and death, birth and death, all taken care of means you come with the understanding that you really live life. You, you don't have to suffer unnecessarily. Uh, all the causes and conditions is really there, the understanding is really there. Like this line, I look back. How can you be so perfect? Everything like, like man to be. I didn't do anything. I just accord and flow and my life become what it is. So all this understanding you must have because these are very rare understanding that can be uh, shared by cultivator of the way because not many has this understanding, then to have the condition to share and make it a living reality is even more rare. Yeah. So with this, hopefully, yeah, it can give you all the understanding, the faith, the confidence, and you determine so that in future, yeah, all of your coming will be taken care of. You don't have to worry anymore. Yeah. Whether sasana or no sasana, no difference. Your cultivation will continue. Yeah. And that is the big difference between the normal Bodhisattva way and the new Bodhisattva way. The normal one, I realize uh, a lot of cultivators of the way, after the sasana, they get lost. Yeah. Then, because of what they have done in the sasana, the cause and condition is such, in the future sasana, they will be born again. And you start again. And this process is going to take you very, very long. Yeah. 
Yeah, very, very long. But you can continue after this sasana, even when there is no sasana, then your progress become very different. Yeah, the transformation of what they call understanding become very much like uh, accelerated. Yeah without you even knowing it, then you become very different. Your nature become very different, especially your spiritual nature. With the spiritual nature, I really like, take a long time to perfect one, uh, to develop one. Uh, uh, of course, karmic nature, everybody has. Uh, uh, but to have a beautiful karmic nature, you need the wisdom cultivated and perfected in the spiritual nature. So these two nature, develop it. Uh, and it will actually accelerate your cultivation, your understanding, and make you very different. Mm. Okay, we better end. Huh? So, uh, PJ, you want to wrap up? Huh? Yeah. That's all, Pratio. Yeah, that's all. I will just. I uh, I know that I will just have to continue what I'm doing. Yeah. And uh, just go with it. Yeah. And accept whatever comes. Yeah. Just do my best. Good, good. Yeah. Okay. Let okay, us rejoice with the causes and conditions for all this sharing. Huh? Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, we shall now share merits and transfer merit. Akka sata chabumata deva naga mahindika punyang tang anamoditwa chirang rakan tulo kasas. Eta wata cha amehi sampadan punya sampadan sabe deva anumodan tu sabe sampati sidia itang menya tinang ho tu sukita hon tunya teyo itang menya tinang ho tu sukita hon tunya teyo itang menya tinang ho tu Sukita hon tu nya tayo Devo asatu kalina Sasa sampati hito cha Fito bawa tu loko cha Raja bawa tu dami ko Imina punyang kamina Mami bala samagamo Satang samagamo hoto Yawa Nivana Patiya Sadhu 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 Okay, you all can now pay respect mindfully to Lord Buddha, Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, and all the worthy ones. Then we shall end. Thank you. Sadhu. Hmm.